Manx Radio's update with Andy Wint. Fast to my good evening, it's half past five. This is update for Thursday, 9th of May 2024 from Manx Radio. 30 minutes looking at the latest news on the island. Background to the news with sport and business, uh, travel updates on the newsmakers in person. This evening, the fast craft Mananans lost an engine, an increase in the uh, number of young people being bullied. MHK questions the timing of the assisted dying referendum. The Fire Festival will be back, but next year, what's the Commonwealth Women's Leadership Program? And the MSPCA says, don't use glue traps. Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines. Fast my Christian Jones. Fast my The steam packet says it's working round the clock to repair technical issues with one of the four engines aboard the fast craft Mananin. Sailings to Liverpool are able to continue, though, but journey times will be extended to 3 hours 30 minutes from the normal 2 hours 45. The Treasury Minister has rebutted claims of a financial gap threatening government's expenditure plans. A newly formed political alliance can consisting of three backbench MHKs, suggest it will be difficult for government to achieve its island plan if its budget isn't aligned with the goals set out. And Mark Cavendish has won the second stage of this year's Tour de Hongrie. The third stage of the race takes place tomorrow. In international news, the Bank of England's held the basic rate of interest at a 16-year high of of 5.25%, meaning borrowing is still very expensive. Governor Andrew Bailey's raised the prospect of a cut next month, saying they're returning to more normal conditions. The mastermind behind an extreme body modification ring that carried out gruesome procedures, including castrations, has been jailed for life. Marius Gustafsson ran a lucrative business, sharing images of surgeries carried out by people with no medical qualifications. And FIFA has been warned of mass revolt and legal action by the world's footballers and leagues over its new Men's Cup World Cup. A letter has been sent by the Global Players Union amid welfare concerns. Those are the update news headlines. Lines next at six. Secure tomorrow today with Man Benham's guidance on powers of attorney and more. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Doromaya, thank you, Christian, from the Ronaldsway Met Office. Uh, no wind warning in operation for the North Irish Sea. State of sea is smooth or slight. Dry this evening with late sunshine and a light southerly. Some uh, drifting mist around this evening and overnight and down to 10 degrees Celsius. For Friday, any early mist will melt away, then dry and bright with sunny spells late Friday. Light breezes and daylight maximum is 18 degrees Celsius. Overnight minimum is 11 Celsius. For uh, Jasan, Saturday, dry with sunny spells, a light southerly, 17 degrees. And much the same on Sunday. Tides on the way out, low water 29 minutes before 8. Sunset 6 minutes past 9. High tide 24 minutes after 1 a.m. Sunrise 22 minutes past 5. And the morning low water at 16 minutes to 8. Manx Glass and Glazing don't just do the big jobs. It's easy to repair broken greenhouse glass at Manx Glass and Glazing. For greenhouse glass cut to size, call 674 573. A mental health charity says it's seeing an increase in young people on the Isle of Man who are being bullied. Lindsay Woods is a therapist with Isle Listen. She says the team's also been speaking with children who've self-harmed due to certain pressures they're facing or family conflict. I think from the work that, that I do and our team does within schools, I think um, some of the main sort of reasons why we get referrals through, there's a, a really high proportion of young people who are engaging in self-harm activities for various reasons. Reasons. Um, a lot of young children are having difficulties within families, so family conflict and breakdown in relationships with family members and also bullying. We're seeing a lot of young people that are coming to us because they're struggling with issues around bullying. Um, I think for young people, they've grown up in a, an era of social media and sometimes it's difficult for them to realise what's reality and what's actually put out on social media. And you'll always see the more positive aspects of things on social media. It's not necessarily real life. 
life, but trying to then adhere to those conceptions and live up to those expectations can be really difficult for young people. Mental health is something that we all struggle with at some point in our lives and it is a very subjective matter. What is you know difficult for one person isn't difficult for another potentially, but the important thing is actually that people reach out for help and support when they need it and feel that they can do that and that there are services there to be able to provide that support. And MHK has questioned whether a move by the heir of Michael MHK, Alfred Cannon, for a referendum on the assisted dying bill should have been suggested much earlier in the process. Douglas South MHK Sarah Maltby says she was surprised by Mr Cannon's announcement in the House of Keys that he was intending to bring forward an amendment which could see the legislation put to a public vote. It's one that I wasn't expecting to hear from the Chief Minister in the House of Keys. I'm concerned that we're not prepared for a referendum just yet. I believe that Dr Allenson stated that there would be some reform required. Uh, this is from, you know, literally listening to what Dr Allenson had to contribute after Mr Cannon made his statement yesterday in the House of Keys. However, I've not had a chance to look at it myself. Um, I know that referendums can be very costly, um, but obviously the benefit of a referendum is that you do get to hear from the people who participate in such. I do believe it's good thinking. However, I would have liked to have seen that maybe at the very beginning of the process. Uh, we're now at the closest stage where we've spent uh, over a year, I'd say. It does feel like a little bit of a wrecking amendment. It feels like it's coming in at this stage to kind of blow the whole thing into the long grass um, because especially if we do need to look at reform and the rec- uh, referendum act, then that could potentially take years to do. So it's I'm interested to hear more from Mr Cannon. Um, like you said, he is speaking as a constituency MHK and not as Chief Minister. So I do want to hear more from him. Yesterday was a bit of a taster. He kind of put it out there to let people know that's what he was planning on doing. So until he's actually made his full statement, it's difficult to comment on what he believes the reasons are for bringing it at this point at, rather than maybe at the beginning of the debate. I've not been involved in a referendum before as a new MHK. So it's 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 a... It's a it's a bold statement, um, but we now need to see the the put the meat on the bones to actually see what it, this involves. This is the most listened to Isle of Man news source, and Manx Radio's update is the Isle of Man's most downloaded news podcast. The Manx SPCA is urging Manx residents not to put up glue traps as they're inhumane and cause prolonged suffering, they say. It's after two robins stuck on such a trap and died due to trauma and stress. Animal Care Officer Emma Hartman says the traps are illegal in different parts of the UK and they'd like to see them banned here. They are kind of plastic or cardboard boards which have a sticky glue layer on them and when the animals walk onto them they get stuck. If people don't get to them before the animals pass away themselves, you then kind of squish them in half to kill the animal or the animal will just die slowly while they're stuck on the trap. Unfortunately, other animals can end up stuck on them. This particular glue trap actually had seed placed on it, which is probably why the robins then went over to get the seed and both got stuck. So they are actually illegal in different parts of the United Kingdom and there is a licensing system coming into place in July this year in England. So the pest control companies have to have a license to use them and members of the public found using them can be fine and end up with a prison sentence as well if they are found using the traps if they are really inhumane. Unfortunately, when we did contact DESA, it's not something they've got in the process at the moment. They're hoping that because it's not going to be as available in the UK that people here won't really be able to get them. But unfortunately, you can actually buy them quite easily online and make your own. So it's not necessarily going to stop them being used here. It would be great if there could be punishment for them and otherwise people will just continue to use them. And if you look them up online, there's been cases where there's been kittens stuff to them and um, other types of birds yeah, in this case obviously the, unfortunately the robins did both pass away so they're really not very nice methods to use and there are other more humane methods you can use if people are dealing with rodents full details of the travel updates there are cancellations at Ronald's Way from Dublin Birmingham from Manchester and London City the current mayor of Douglas will continue in her role but she'll be joined by a new deputy mayor Natalie Byron Tier chose councillor Peter Washington to work alongside her for the next year and says it's exciting to be one of the few mayors to do consecutive terms. Really excited, you know it's an opportunity to continue the community engagement that I've already been doing um, a year just doesn't seem long enough sometimes so yeah I'm really excited about the, the opportunity. We've had 126 years of the mayorality, 85 mayors 13 of which have been female and some mayors have done consecutive years before but I'm the first female to do two consecutive years. That's quite exciting, you know, um, I was given a little bit of stick, my family 
family are quite superstitious. I was given a little bit of stick about being the 13th mayor. So now I'm literally the 13th and 13th A. Or 12A and 13th, as my mum puts it. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's quite, a, quite an exciting um, thing for me to, to be the first to do that. Um, I just hope I can do it justice. I'm definitely here to support Natalie, but I think more than anything, I'm here to learn. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity to learn from Natalie as this is her second year of doing it. So it's a very unique and a very exciting time. So I'm very excited to be able to learn from Natalie. The only radio station that's Manx, and we're proud of it. Celebrating 60 years, this is Manx Radio. Thanks to my, it's 19 minutes before six this Thursday evening. Women from the Isle of Man are being encouraged to apply to participate in the Commonwealth Women's Leadership Programme for 2024-25. So what is it? What benefits can it bring for your career? Louise Corkill of Isle of Man Sport has previously been awarded a place on the initiative. It started in 2018 kind of with a, a pilot scheme and that was around bringing coaches to a Commonwealth Games and following the success of that in 2022 they initiated the Commonwealth Women's Leadership Programme it's aimed at supporting and empowering women from the Commonwealth on their own personal journey towards becoming an influential leader and an agent of change in the field of sport within their community there's a, a £5,000 financial scholarship if you like and a comprehensive kind of mentoring programme alongside it well it was a fantastic opportunity for me I used some of the scholarship to go to the International Working Group eighth conference in New Zealand. It's a women in sport conference, um, one of the largest organisations in the world promoting gender equity and gender equality in sport. And that was a fantastic opportunity just to network and meet with other like-minded individuals, but also to share and exchange knowledge and ideas and challenges that people were facing across the world. So I think it's really easy to stay within your own environment, within your own network and the opportunity to go and meet other people, particularly from different areas and to explore their ideas and their challenges provides a different perspective, which I don't think you get necessarily. And I think being from the Isle of Man, it's particularly you've got the sea in the way majority of, of the time. So it, it's a fantastic opportunity to network with other people from across the world. I think we're fortunate here on the island to have such a wealth of sporting opportunity. But this programme in particular is very, very open. If you're involved as a coach, an official, an administrator, performance services, physio, psychology, the opportunity to be involved is one that I would encourage anyone to get involved with regardless of your role within sport. Manx Radio Business Briefing. At 17 minutes before six, ITV, the broadcaster, reported a fall in first quarter revenues today, dragged lower by the production arm, which was hit by the American writers and actors strike. ITV Studios' revenue was also hit by weaker demand from free-to-air broadcasters in Europe who have been holding back spend until they see more certainty in the advertising market, the company said. For a full daily market report, go to RamseyCrookall.com. Over 800,000 people across Europe and the United States have fallen victim to a large-scale online scam involving fake designer brand websites originating from China, The Guardian reports. Since 2015, about 76,000 multilingual websites have been created, offering fake discounts on designer goods like Dior, Nike and Lacoste, and attempting to take 50 million euros. That's £43 million. Pounds. Victims have been fooled into sharing personal details, making payments, often receiving incorrect items or nothing in return. More than half of the victims have shared debit and credit card information that exposes them to potential identity theft and cybercrime. The scam underscores the global trend of increasing online fraud in Britain. Online scams surged by 43% in the first half of last year compared to the previous year. The Stock Market Report. Brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European markets closed higher. The dollar weakened against most currencies and oil rose as falling US crude inventories and higher Chinese imports supported expectations for demand growth. The numbers from Ramsey Crookall at the close in London, the FTSE 100s up a third of a percent, 8,381. The DAX in Frankfurt up nearly a percentage point at the close, 18,679. A short time ago in New York City, the Dow Jones Industrial up four tenths of a percent, 39,000. 
1,229. The Nasdaq Tech Stocks Index up a quarter of a percent at 16,339. And the S&P 500 up three-tenths of a percent at 5,202. In the exchange markets, the British pound sterling is trading at one US dollar, 25 cents, one euro, 16 cents, and 23 South African rand, 12.5 cents. In commodities, gold's up nearly a percentage point at $2,330 per troy ounce, and a barrel of Brent crude down three-tenths of a percent at $83.45. I'm running late again. Do you know where I put my car keys? In the fridge. Where's my phone? Under the dog baskets. Bye. You haven't forgotten that we're seeing Ramsey Cook all later? Oh, um, no, of, of course not. Um, 5pm, is it? Quarter to three. I'll be there. Life is busy. That's why Ramsey Crookall's team takes time to help you make a mindful investment decision. Considering all the options, giving you full control of your financial future. Less stress, more assurance. Forgot to put my shoes on. Oh. See how we can make your money work for you. Call 717171 or visit RamseyCrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. A respected local scout leader stepping down after 40 years. 40 years service to the youth movement. Bernard Moore has been in charge of 1st Moran Scout since 1984. He may be stepping down as leader, but will still be on hand to help out with camps and other activities. Highlights of Bernard's lengthy spell at the helm included visits to various scout jamborees and group visits to the UK, Ireland and America. His motivation for joining the scout movement was the desire to see young people having fun, learning new skills, growing in confidence and maturing into young adults over the years. He says a good scout leader requires many attributes, but patience, creativity, organisational skills and commitment are must-haves. First Moran's lead volunteer, Paul Crane, says Bernard will be missed enormously and his commitment has been a real inspiration to generations of scouts. Manx Radio Sport. Fast to my Rob Pritchard. Fast to my good evening. Starting with football and Douglas High School old boys have maintained their lead at the top of DPS Limited Combination 2. With the title race in that division still looking as if it's heading down to the wire. Old boys were awarded an away walkover against Jim's while second placed Onken, just one point behind them with a game in hand, suffered a 5-3 defeat at Foxdale. Elsewhere in that league, Governors Athletic were 4-3 winners at home to Colby, whilst Castletown earned a 3-0 victory at Ramsey Youth Centre and Old Boys. In Combination 1, Champions Ramsey secured a comprehensive 8-2 win at Douglas Royal. Runners up Russian United won 2 0 at home against Corinthians, and there were three points apiece in the other two matches for Union Mills and Air United. Tonight sees the big conclusion to the under 21 season with the final of this year's Cowl Cup. Corinthians will face off against Peel, with that match getting underway at the bowl tonight at 7 45 pm. In cycling, Mark Cavendish has won the second stage of this year's Tour de Hungary. The Manx Missile took first spot today ahead of Dylan Gronovagen in second and John Aberasturi, who completes the podium in third place. It's Cavendish's second individual stage win of 2024, having taken first place on the fourth stage of the Tour of Columbia in February. And finally in motorsport, Davy Todd will be on pole position ahead of Peter Hickman and Dean Harrison for the opening Superstock race of the Northwest 200 this evening after the final practice sessions of the meeting earlier today. Elsewhere, Todd has qualified second behind Richard Cooper for the Supersport class with Mike Brown in third. In the Superbikes, Glenn Irwin has started on top spot, having already unofficially smashed the lap record in the class with Todd second and Michael Dunlop third. Hickman has gone fastest in qualifying on the Super Twin ahead of Cooper in second and Jeremy McWilliams in third. Racing is underway there this evening with the four-lap superbike race, followed by the first Supersport and Superstock contest respectively, also both over four laps. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Inbound at Ronald's Way, the quarter past one, uh, Logan Air from Manchester will be in until six o'clock tonight, so all sorts of problems. Earlier on, Dublin, Birmingham and Manchester flights were cancelled. The 525 Logan Air from Manchester, one of those. Next in, 725 EasyJet from London Gatwick, the 5 to 8 o'clock Logan Air from Liverpool, returning patient transfer, and 10 to 9 Logan Air from London City, has been cancelled tonight. Outbound, uh, the six o'clock Logan Air to Liverpool's on time. Ten past six, uh, flight to Dublin is showing on time at the moment. The 528 EasyJet to London Gatwick is on time, but uh, were problems earlier on. On the roads, temporary lights on New Road Laxey near Logie Graw for building alterations. Croyty Quill Road in Laxey is closed for gas upgrades. And also uh, temporary lights on New Road for building alteration. In St John's, temporary lights on the main road between St John's and Ballaleaf Bridge work on the pavements. And uh, three-way lights on the TT course at the Poor Town Road Junction with Bullig Bridge. 
for bridge painting. Temporary lights on Sandy Gate Road, they're working on the pavements and water main replacements in Braddon. Still those lights on Vicarage Road at Stevenson's Way. Temporary lights in Farm Hill at Balafton Manor Hill near the Corfaran Junction. Face closures on Ballakill Ferric Road to Colby, also the Starvey Road and Andrus Kondrockard Road for water main work. Temporary lights on Church Road, Port Aaron for patching work and in Douglas, part of Switzerland Road's closed till November for construction work. Hillside Avenue is closed through to Circular Road for window replacement and the Millennium Bridge closes tonight at 8 o'clock through till 4am for repairs and maintenance. Ask how you can spread the cost interest-free at Keyside. Faster My, thanks for joining Manx Radio tonight. After securing a new sponsor, organisers of the E. Volden Fire Festival say it will return to Peel next May, May 2025. This year's event was called off due to lack of funding, but its return has been guaranteed after St John's based jewellery brand Element Isle came forward with sponsorship support. The event's co founder is John Shakespeare. We're so happy to be here today to announce that we have a headline sponsor, which is Element Isle. And their contribution secures the future of the festival, barring any natural disasters, of course. But the fact that we are announcing it almost at the time that we should have had it this year means we've got a whole year of planning and we can make it bigger and better. Not only for the people on the Isle of Man, but what's really important, we were having hundreds of people coming from across and from America and all these sort of places. So the fact that we can announce today that we've got the finance in place, and of course, it's so sympathetic to the event. You couldn't get a better products and they're in the west so it just works totally for me we've now got over 200 people on our performance page and we have over 6,000 people coming throughout the day and that's one of the reasons why the costs i think most op, uh, event operators know the costs have almost doubled which meant that the, the price you have to pay for health and safety and all that sort of stuff and the licenses is difficult to find so so we we had a number of years we grew significantly and then of course we had a sponsor but it just didn't quite work out this year but uh, so it's great to be able to do that for next year the I- of man in 30 minutes update on manx radio with andy wind first of all you may spot some drifting coastal mist but uh, be aware i've just checked the webcams the mountain road is clear with some brilliant sunshine a political alliance of backbench mhk says there'll need to be public sector job cuts to address what it describes as a financial gap chris thomas mhk who's formed the group with the fellow backbenchers claire christian and julie edge uh, says the public needs to see the government is doing its bit to save costs what we've said is we want to say very clearly there is this financial gap, this public financial gap. We need to keep saying over and over again that there is this financial gap and we've got and we've got this amount of time to actually prioritise capital expenditure. So if Castle Russian High School can't be the number one priority and can't definitely get financed but we're going to pretend it is up to the lecture and we've got to be honest and say that we actually have a funding review of education and this and this and this needs to happen before and, and that we've got questions coming up to, to, to draw that out because I think government is considering some quite unauthorised, un, un, um, some novel funding approaches um, to things like Castle Russian High School, which the public needs to know about in advance rather than being surprised because that links with Manx Development Corporation and the approach to the steam packet so, and the so like. Tell us, tell us about these. Well, it's just, it's just the Treasury Minister hints at it all the time, but we need to be honest. He talks about alternative financing strategies, which presumably by which he means public finance initiatives and then borrowing more money and all of those sorts of things, which have not been the Manx, not been the um, not been the Manx way. So we need to draw that out in public. Public, and then we need to get to the public on our side to say we are doing our bit with saving costs. We aren't duplicating with fighting between um, departments. And you know, ultimately, we'll, 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 we'll say it because we told the trade unions we're going to say it. it it's going to involve some um, some some job cuts. So that that burning platform that you and I have heard about for twenty years is actually much closer than it than it ever has been before. Just a quick reminder: Mananan, the fast craft, has lost an engine. She's now on three rather than four engines. Selling to Liverpool will continue continue to go ahead but the crossing time will be three and a half hours not two hours 45 and the Dublin sailings for this Sunday have been rescheduled and MHK will look to draft a bill that would ensure everybody would have access to free period products on the Isle of Man. Douglas East member Joni Farragher's motion was supported by 20 votes to four at this week's Keys. Kate Law Brennan and Rob Callister MHKs both suggested areas that should be considered. We are a little behind on this issue 
Scotland has had this in place since 2021, and Northern Ireland and Wales are in the process of following suit. In England, the Period Poverty Task Force set up by the UK government has rolled out free period products in all primary and secondary schools from January 2020. I hope this bill will not only catch us up, but bring us alongside the leading countries on this issue. In conclusion, offering free period products is a big step towards a more inclusive and compassionate society. It's a statement that we value every person's dignity and rights, regardless of their gender or economic status. It's time to break the silence, end the stigma and ensure that periods are no longer a barrier, but a natural part of life that we support with empathy and understanding. Prior to getting to a point of considering primary legislation, what initiatives or work has the Honourable Member done to sort of look at other ways to perhaps target and, and address this rather than have primary legislation and something that would ultimately be um, have to be supported by taxpayer funds. Um, it's also the case that people have preference and choice on, on, on these matters as well and, and, and may not just want sort of simply what's provided in a, in, a, in a basket that I guess the state would choose. So that's curious to me. I hope the move of the bill also looks at further education within our schools because that was a clear feedback from the students that I spoke to that some of the, the anxieties and some of the issues and some of the problems they faced within the school setting and how the teachers dealt with those situations that needs to be addressed as well but i wish the move well and i look forward to seeing the draft legislation in due course that's it for update tonight compiled from the resources of mainstream radio's news department thanks to newsreader christian jones producer amy griffiths after the news at six bobby bob john billy's here bob carswell and the team with shackley Razor Sits with Simon Clark at 6.30, Morris Powell with a little light music at 9, and Update returns Friday evening at 5.30. Enjoy the sunshine. W-I-N-T.